it's Haley, aka Studious Haley. Welcome back to my channel, welcome back to my video. And yeah, um, I might be trying to change my channel name. I don't know how that works, but I know people have done it, I think. I don't know, I was thinking of changing it to Haley's Hobbies because um, if you're like a long-term subscriber, obviously I did college content, but I have now graduated college. Um, definitely go check out my last video that I uploaded. It was a week in the life, or like last week of my life in college plus graduating, which is insane. Um, yeah, but if you're new here, hi, my name is Haley. I recently graduated with my bachelor's of science in microbiology. I'm currently job hunting, which is a pain. Um, and I... Yeah, so we're kind of changing my channel content because I don't really do study stuff anymore, I guess. I'm not really planning on going to grad school at the moment, so I don't know. Uh, study content might be few and far between. Um, but I have been wanting to change up my channel content because I've just been wanting to. I really love talking about books and I love talking about knitting. Like, I knitted this cardigan and I'm making a sweater right now, so I really want to talk about that, which is why I'm thinking of changing, I guess, my little channel name to Haley's Hobbies if I can, um, or something to do with just something not, that doesn't say studious, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, so as you can see by the title of today's video, we are doing a What I Read in May video. I keep wanting to say vlog, but it's a video. Um, I'm going to take you through all the books that I read in May. I have read one, two, six and a half books. I'm going to finish up the seventh book today or tomorrow, and so I'm just going to count that as finishing it to, like it during May. Um, but let's just go ahead and get into all the books and everything that I'm reading. Um, I've had a really good reading month. I have been on and off with reading this semester just because I've been knitting a lot and I get really obsessive when I knit and so I just haven't been reading but I took a bit of a break from knitting in like early May so I could also focus on my finals um, but then I also read a lot but I did great we got all A's and one B for my last semester which is good um, but yeah I read a lot of good books this I keep wanting to say semester this um, month. A lot of these are five star, actually, I think almost all, one, two, three, four, five star reads so far, I think. And then maybe a potential five star. Um, I'm not done with the book yet, but I will get there when we get there. Um, but yeah, I have my reading notebook here, so we'll be talking about this. Cool. So let's go ahead and get started. I don't have all the books with me because I have checked a couple out from the library that I have since returned. And then me and my roommates have like a little library in our living room where we just like put books on there and like take them out and whatever and like share them amongst each other. Um, and so a couple of like three of them I borrowed from my roommate, um, which I could go and grab, but I'm lazy. So I'll just put up like pictures right here of the books that I'm talking about. Um, and show you the ones that I have, which are two. <laughs> so yeah, anyway, the first book that I read in May was Spillover by David Quammen. Um, this is about like zoonotic diseases, so diseases that infect animals and then potentially pass into humans. Um, and it kind of talks about like what could be the next pandemic um, in humans. And this was really good. I gave this five stars. Um, one of my favorite books that got me into microbi- or the the one book that got me into microbiology was The Hot Zone. It was- it was The Hot Zone. I read this like freshman year of high school and immediately I was like, ooh, infectious diseases, microbiology, beautiful, wonderful, mwah, mwah. Um, <laughs> and so, um, I've always had a love for like science books and I have like a bunch. I've been seeing it in Barnes and Noble for the past couple of years, but I just haven't gotten around to buying it because I've always been like, mm, no, not this time, maybe next time. Um, but I finally bought it um, and I am obsessed. I feel like I don't have to read any other like science book about infectious diseases because I feel like this was just the full, like just everything I needed in life in terms of that. Um, I will still keep reading them. I literally have one right here 
that I'll probably read eventually, probably later in the year, because it's like the same subject. Yeah, this is incredible. He, so David Quammen, Quammen, I don't even know how to pronounce it. He takes you through a bunch of different diseases um, and talks about their origins and takes you through the history and like how they got from like what animal to human um, and like where it went from there. It's like the sort of pandemic. So there was, um, there was Ebola, there was Hantavirus, Hantavirus, I think? No, Hendra. There was Hendra, Ebola, there was a section about Nipah, which I actually did a paper on, and I didn't realize he was going to talk about Nipah in here, because otherwise I would have pulled from here, but like, I got to that section and I was like, I know everything about this disease. And so, yeah, there's also bird flu, Lyme disease, um, there's a couple like bacterial kind of things that he talks about. Most of the zoonotic diseases do end up being viruses actually though. Um, he also did a section on SARS, but like the 2003 outbreak, because this was published in like 2012, I think. Um, and so he like went, like talked about SARS and like what happened with it. And basically it literally was history repeating itself for like the 2020 pandemic. Um, and he was even like, SARS is still lurking. And this was back in 2012, which is insane to think about. And so to be able to read that with like, the knowledge of like the pandemic was really trippy and it was just it was so good he also has an like a big section on hiv and aids i haven't really learned a whole lot about aids i feel like that's definitely something i should have but i only learned about it when i took my immunology class this semester because it affects like your immune cells it affects the cd4 t plus cells um basically just obliterates them and those cells are important because they help basically every other cell for your immune system so like you essentially have no immune system um and so he came up with like his like he um the, the exact origins are not really known but he kind of was like this is what i think kind of like what i would imagine like a boy on a boat going through like where were we at i don't even remember i this was like a long time ago but um like traveling and then meeting this girl and like all this stuff um so that was really entertaining to read and so i just really liked this and it definitely is a more sciencey science book i've read a couple science books at this point and this is definitely the most like technical out of all of them i don't think i think it would be a little tricky if you don't really know anything about science um, because he go he like there was this whole chapter on like statistics which was like a lot. Um, I definitely think if you want to like read about a disease like the hot zone is a pretty good place to start even though it's like kind of inaccurate and dramatized dramatized. Um, but it's definitely a great place to start and it it's what inspired me to do microbiology in the first place. Um, yeah, still really love this book. I gave it five stars and. Yeah, that's spillover. So the second book that I read in May was A Natural History of Dragons. I don't remember who this is by. This was by Marie Brennan, and I really love this book as well. The rating, though, has gone down. Um, I initially gave it a five-star read because I really loved it, but there's an event that happens at the end that really pissed me off, and because of that, I was at first I was like, I'm not going to let that ruin my enjoyment of the book, but it really did ruin how much I love the book and now I'm like mm, do I really need to keep going because at first I wanted to keep reading the series but now I'm like hmm what's the point like if any of y'all have read like the rest of A Natural History of Dragons let me know what y'all think um I'm trying to get a library card so hopefully they have like the next couple books because I at least want to get the first book because partly because the cover is just stunning um but like the all the covers of the books are beautiful um, but I think I might get the second book from the library before I commit to, like, buying the whole series. But anyway, so A Natural History of Dragons is basically about this girl, um, I can't even remember her name anymore. Oh my god. <laughs> I know the husband's name. I don't remember the girl's name. Um, but basically, she loves dragons like is just absolutely obsessed with them ever since she was a kid um and would keep like all these little i think they're called sparklings like the little baby dragons 
like little not babies but like little tiny dragons that she would find around her garden and she would keep them and like uh, preserve them and then like study them and all this stuff um and then there was like an event that happened where she kind of like pulled away from dragons and then kind of like similar to me she found this book called a natural history of dragons and that's what inspired her to go into like dragon stuff um also it's set i'm i really i keep going all over the place but it's set like in victorian time not, i don't know it's kind of it's not like this is london and this is england but like it has like those vibes of like regency kind of victorian i don't think it's edwardian i don't even know what i'm talking about back to my point um like an event happens and then like she doesn't study dragons as much anymore and then like she has to get married um and all this stuff happens and eventually she travels to this one place where there have been a lot of dragon attacks um and they don't know what's going on and so her and like her group of people have to figure out why there are all these dragons attacks and see if they can stop them um and it kind of takes it through the guise of like, like almost like scientific journal kind of thing where she'll like share her observations and stuff but like in a really good way i was i was a little apprehensive at first which was why i checked it out from the library because i didn't want to read it and not enjoy it and then be upset that i spent the money on it you know but it definitely it's definitely like just like a typical novel but like she like in kind of goes like dear reader like uh continue at your own risk um so kind of like because it's a it's um like a memoir <laughs> i'm so bad at explaining this anyway it's a memoir it's like her memoir that she is sharing about her travels and so occasionally she'll pop in and be like hey reader da -da 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 -da. um and so, and like sometimes there's little notes where she's like talking with their editor, like, I'm putting this in here, I don't care. <laughs> and it's really good, I really liked it. I think it was a good balance between like having that kind of memoir aspect versus like just your typical novel. I felt like there was a good mix of that. So I really enjoyed it. Um, and so now I'm kind of tempted also to pick up the second book actually. Now I'm not as apprehensive, but yeah, I really loved it. It was initially a five star, but because of an event that happened at the end, yeah, I, I'm bringing it down a bit. Um, it was merely for like, ugh, I don't want to say it because I don't want to spoil it, but I'm just annoyed with it. It's down to like a 4.5, four star. Maybe, I think I'll, maybe I'll do a 4.5 because I still love it. And I would really love to, I think I would really love to pick up the next couple books. I also did a spread in my bullet journal or not bullet journal oh my gosh book journal um so yeah so that was the second book that i read in may and then the third book i read in may was a complete shock um <laughs> i didn't expect to love this as much as i did so it was a witch's guide to fake dating a demon and i just picked this up on, on a whim at target i was picking up light bulbs and i went into the book section and i saw this book and i was like that's a really cute cover and then like i read the the blurb and I was like that actually sounds really funny so basically you have um Marielle I think is her name and I cannot remember book names for the life of me um but she's the witch and she's more of like a nature -y kind of witch she loves her plants um she loves baking and all that good stuff um and so like she's really good with plants and kind of is able to like get them to bloom when others can and kind of like save them from like the brink of death right but her family really doesn't respect that they don't really see that as like strong good magic and like there was a prophecy where she was going to be like the most powerful witch in like however many generations for that family um and so they're kind of like you deal with plants like there's nothing there you know versus like other things like teleportation which I feel like doing stuff with plants is a lot more cooler than teleportation. Anyway, and so one day she's making, she's baking something and she goes to summon flour, but she accidentally summons a demon named Ozroth. And so this whole, like, and what she doesn't realize is that she um, summoned it with like a soul bargain. And so basically what she can get whatever she wants, but he takes her soul at the end of the day. Um, and so once she figures it out, she's like, what the heck? And so she keeps trying to like send him back and it's all this stuff. And so it just follows them through um, their relationship and like all these crazy things that happen because there's stuff that's happening to her town at the same time. And like, 
there's like this disease that's spreading across like the forest there is a fuzz in my drink and so it's just i did not expect to love this as much as i did i gave it five stars i was just it was so good it was so entertaining i haven't i don't think read like a witch YA contemporary sort of novel before and so this was just so fun to read and I really love like the little aspects of aspects of magic throughout the day. I really love the relationship with Oz and Mariel and I feel like the tension there was wonderful and I felt like it really was drawn out perfectly. The there's always like a third act conflict with YA contemporaries which I always hate and there was that here but I feel like it kind of went a little bit too quickly. I felt like the, there could have been like another chapter or two in the book to really round things out and not... Hello, I'm back. My roommate got mail. Anyway, so I think what I was saying was that I think it just kind of wrapped up a little too quickly. Um, I would have loved like another chapter or two, um, but I, I still really loved it. It There were like a couple lines in there that I was really like, wow, I really should have annotated this book because this is just so beautiful like um or just just like some quotes that like just really resonated with me like there was like you will not move me i belong here and i was just like that's that's really nice i like that <laughs> and then also there was um there was one uh <laughs> there was one quote that was like she was out of flex to give and the demon plane half no fury like a scorned witch and i was like that's a good line um but yeah i really loved it i'm really excited for the second book if you're interested in this book do not read the blurb for the second book do not it will spoil the first book not really but like it it, it does so do not read the blurb for the second book but like <laughs> my roommate also borrowed this book and she really loved it as well um there is spice in it that's pretty good and um <laughs> i um when i read the blurb of the second book i i out loud i was like what like in my room and so then i my roommate read the book and i was like you have to look at the blurb for the second book and she was like okay i'm gonna do that so she opened it up and um <laughs> she too went what um and it was just so funny and so i'm really excited for the second book i think it comes out in november so i'm really excited yeah i just i'm so excited i did not expect to love it this much and yeah and it had some really cool like demon lore stuff as well like there was a lot of like background and like i guess like world building of like the demon plane kind of thing which i thought was really cool I also don't read a whole lot of like witchy YA books. I think this was my first one, so um, maybe it's very similar, but to me that was like really cool. So yeah, I'm definitely picking up the second book. Um, I read it in like two days. I was so excited, or I really loved it, um, and I'm just so excited. Okay, anyway, next book. So the fourth book that I read in May was Ash Parker Does Not- Doesn't Fail? Yeah, Astra Parker doesn't fail. So it's the second book in the Bright Falls trilogy. The first one is very famously Delilah Green doesn't care. I love Delilah Green with all my heart. <laughs> and so the second book came out and me and my roommates were really excited. So I um, borrowed it from my roommate and I read it and I really liked it as well. I don't know if I did a spread on it actually. I didn't. Um, I think I ended up giving it just four stars. Um, I don't remember why. <laughs> Um, but I gave it four stars. It was really good. I really loved it. And the relationship is really cute. I really love, like, the premise behind it. Basically what happens is that you have Astrid Parker, who is the sister of Delilah Green, and Astrid is, like, an interior designer, kind of, like, home renovator kind of person. Um, and so she gets this job at this inn to, like, revamp it and get it ready for just kind of bring it into the, like the 21st century and at the same time uh a, like a tv crew is coming to film for like a home renovation like series like that's super popular kind of like um i don't know i don't really watch reno shows but you know stuff like that so all this is going to be filmed on tv and then she meets um Oh my god, I can't even think of her name either. She th she meets this girl who is um, the granddaughter of the owner. She does like all the carpentry kind of stuff and is in charge of like 
all of like the actual making of the things and so they just butt heads like all the time like they met really awfully and so it just takes them through that and like trying to save the end and making sure it doesn't close um and it's really good i really liked it the smut was also really good um and astrid um I won't say much because it kind of spoils the first book of Delilah Green. You don't have to read them in order, but like if you do, it does spoil what's going on. So I won't say anything. I would just say that it's really good and I'm excited for the third book. It comes out like a few days before my birthday. So I think like I will pick it up for my birthday and maybe just buy the whole series um, for my birthday. So yeah. Both um, A Witch's Guide to Fake Dating a Demon and Astrid Parker are like the type of contemporaries where like the series are connected but not like that crazily. Like they'll just pick out characters from like previous novels and focus on them and usually it's like a friend or like a family member. Um, kind of like <laughs> how romance novels do it, like the ones with the men on the cover um, and how they'll have like 10 different novels in the series and like they really don't you don't need to read all of them but like there are characters from other ones and then like you focus on a different character in the next book like that um so like you don't have to you can read these out of order um but i would recommend i think astrid parker is easier to understand if you do read it in order because there's a lot that happens in the first book anyway so that was the fourth book that i read and then these fifth and sixth books that I read were the Six of Crows duology. Um, so I actually read Six of Crows like a couple years ago and I read it like way too fast. I used to read really really fast um, which was fine like in high school and stuff but like in college for some reason I just started getting burned out with reading. I could read like a giant book like this in like a day or two um, and then like I wouldn't read for like months after that and so Basically, um, since like last year, last May actually, I've been on this journey to just read slower um, because like it's not a race. I want to enjoy my book. I would like to remember the book that I read. I know that I haven't been remembering any of the character names, but that's besides the point. <laughs> um, but you know, I would like to remember the books that I read because there was this book that I read that I read so fast, like three times, and then like the fourth time I was like, you know what, we're gonna slow it down a little bit. And then there was this whole scene that I missed, which makes total sense, because it would, there was another scene that happened after that that I was always so confused about, because there was like no context to it whatsoever, but it makes sense with the scene that I missed every like time that I read the book. Anyway, so I've been trying to read more slowly, basically, and I've been really interested in reading Six of Crows again, because I kind of want to watch Shadow and Bone, um, and I know they're in there, and I, I just wanted to watch it, um, and so I read Six of Crows, this time more slowly, and thankfully I actually remember most of what happened. There was the event at the end, like, right at the end that I completely forgot about, but other than that, up until that point in the book, I pretty much remembered everything. Not everything, like, I, I remember the overarching, like, plot of the book, but not, like, all the little details, um, but I did end up giving this book also a five star. Um, I really loved it. Um, I think it's so clever how Lee Bardugo is able to, like, craft, like, these, like, crazy storylines that are, like, I would compare them to, like, Brandon Sanderson, not, because Brandon, that's, like, completely, like, of its own league, but, like, kind of, like, this storytelling where, like, every little bit, like, kind of comes back in, and then, like, how, like, she manages, like, I would not be able to, like, I tried to like solve all these problems in my head but I never could and then when she would reveal like what was actually going on I'd always be like oh my god um and so it was, I really enjoyed it um and I also read the second book Crooked Kingdom it was my first time reading Crooked Kingdom and I really loved that one too that was really complex like at the end with everything coming together and it was so good um basically Six of Crows if you don't know it's kind of like an Ocean's 8 kind of thing, so there are six people who have been asked to break into, like, the Ice Kingdom Palace thing to retrieve this scientist guy who has made this drug, and in the Grishaverse, which is where we're set, there's, like, normal human people, and then there's, like, 
um, Grisha, who have different powers, and it could be, like, um, healers, you could kill people with your powers, you could, like, make things, you could, like, control tidal waves and stuff like that, um, and so it's really cool. And so the scientists made, like, a drug that basically enhances these powers, and all hell breaks loose. Um, and so they're trying to get the scientists so no one else gets a hand on the scientists so that way they can, like, nip this in the bud before people start realizing there's this drug going around and, like, there's, like, wars going on for it. Um, so it takes you through their heist. And then Crooked Kingdom follows all the events that, like, wrap up in the end of the first novel. Um, and, like, how, like, they solve the end of the first novel and get revenge and all this stuff and it's just wonderful and I loved it and so I gave both of them five stars and I would really love to pick up both of the books and I think Lee Bardugo is coming out with a third like book actually but like set like a couple years later um and so if that's true I'm really excited so I really loved it and I think it's best if you just like go into it not knowing what to expect um so that's all I will say about Six of Crows duology I really loved it and then last but not least, the book that I'm hoping to finish, like, today or tomorrow, but I'm gonna, just gonna count it as May, um, is um, actually a middle grade book, which I don't ever read middle grade, because obviously I am now a ripe old age of 22, turning 23 in October. I am old. But this caught my eye, just because the cover is so pretty, and then, like, I really like the synopsis. So this is Spineless by... Samantha San Miguel, and I got this from Barnes & Noble. I saw this, like, in April, and it was their Barnes & Noble, like, book of the month, and I believe it's, like, she's a local author here at Bryan College Station, which is really cool, and so I was happy to, like, support that, but, um, at the time I didn't get it in August, or April, because, yeah, April, because I was like, eh, maybe not, and then I, um, spent a lot of money <laughs> in May after I graduated. I had some money that I had saved since like freshman year and so I was like I'm gonna go buy some books with this money and this caught my eye again and I was like yeah we're gonna do it. So this is Spineless and this is so cute! I love it so much! I'm only about like a little over halfway but basically this is about Algy Emsworth and he is like 12 years old. This is set like I think at the end of the 18th century maybe but basically he has asthma and so he goes on a trip with his family to Florida kind of like to get go on like a health retreat kind of thing at this health resort and then there he meets these two girls Frankie and Lulu um and uh basically it's just it, they end up going on like the craziest adventures um based there's like a red tide that's like infecting the coast of like Florida and killing all these animals and so they're trying to like figure out why this is happening because not nothing's known about the red tide at that point and then also they find um a, like a new species and so then they're trying to protect the species because there's this obviously like this villain guy I won't say who because that kind of spoils it I feel like a little bit um and so they're all trying to do this also while trying to save the hotel because the hotel's going bankrupt and then, but there's like a curse, and so they're just trying to do all these things, and it's just so cute, and like, they all want to be naturalists and like scientists, and so they have their little notebooks, and like, they take their notes, and they have like, microscopes, and it's, it's so cute! I love it because when I was a kid, I was obsessed with like, so many different things. I loved, di I loved dinosaurs, I still love dinosaurs. I was obsessed with sharks, space, there was even like a horse face in there. I loved fairies, um, and like I had, I distinct, very distinctly I remember this, I have the, had the spiral yellow notebook, um, it was like a wide world notebook, and it was for my shark notes, and like I would check out so many shark books from the library, and I would buy so many shark books, watch so many shark things, they were like, they used to have National Geographic documentaries on Netflix, they don't have them anymore, which really sucks, but I would have like my notebook, and I would write my little notes, and I would draw my pictures, and then I would make my handwriting like intentionally messy, because I was like, that's what a scientist's handwriting looks like. Um, and so, this just really spoke to me. Yeah, I'm so happy I picked this up because it's so cute. And it's really, like, very, um, there's, like, a lot of 
it's not just like a kid novel there's like a lot of other stuff like algae um algae algae his dad died from tuberculosis and so he has algae has asthma but now he's wondering if he has tuberculosis and if that means he's gonna die soon and so now he has wants to make all these scientific discoveries before he dies and it's, he's just like i have no time y'all have time but i don't and it's so sad <laughs> And so, anyway, I love this so much so far. I'll, I'll probably give it five stars because it's just the memories and, like, I just, it's good vibes. And the cover is stunning. Like, look how pretty this cover is. This is beautiful. I really love this book, and I'm excited to finish it. Um, we'll finish it tonight, maybe, or tomorrow. Who knows? Those are the seven books that I read in May. A really good reading month. I haven't read um, this much in a while. <laughs> Um, but I'm very happy and I'm excited to keep reading for June and July, obviously, and hopefully I find a job soon so I can buy books because I need money to buy books and yarn for my knitting. Um, but yeah, anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it was a bit all over the place. This is the first time I've, I'm doing, like, what I read in May book video, so, um, yeah, I'm getting the hang of it but hopefully you guys like this um and i think when y'all will see me next is maybe a summer book haul because i filmed that um i bought i bought some books for summer um <laughs> and yeah and then i'll maybe the occasional knitting video and yeah so anyway thank you guys so much for watching i hope you guys enjoyed this video don't forget to like comment and subscribe and i will see you guys in the next one bye